Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. Before we start with the adventures of Tower Farmer Park Sejum, go and check out the story of a cute squirrel-shaped shifter who regresses to her childhood just before she dies. See how the adorable, smart, and resourceful girl tries her best to give herself a wonderful future and how she changes the lives of people around her while doing that. Check out the video on our channel if you haven't already seen it. In the last video, we started the story with the Black Warrior Rabbit and the Crimson Bear Cub play fighting with each other, and Sejun watched them while relaxing. But then he got a surprise in the form of a mysterious ball the Queen Poison Honeybee gave him. He learned that it was the cocoon of a Poison Honeybee Queen. Sejun knew that the colony would suffer if they got a second queen at this stage and decided to raise the cocoon on his own to help the new queen create her own hive. Soon, Theo returns back to the cave after completing his deal, thinking about how he will monopolize Sejun's lap this time. When he spots the baby bear holding Sejun's bag, Theo suddenly panics as he thinks that the bear killed and ate Sejun, and he is angry that he will not get to lay on his lap anymore. He was about to attack the confused bear when Sejun came out of the tower using the manual elevator and explained everything to the anxious cat merchant. Theo is relieved that his bad thoughts did not come true, and then Sejun thinks that he should give the bear cub a name if he already does not have one. The bear cub does not have a name, and Sejun names him Qing because that is what he says all the time. While everyone is disappointed in his naming sense, he manages to convince the bear to accept it. Then Theo demands his privileges as the sales cat, and Sejun takes him into his lap and feeds him Churu. But when Qing licks the Churu, Theo gets angry and scratches him with his claws, which makes the bear cub cry. And hearing his cry, his mother leaps to their location like a rocket. Now, the mother bear stares menacingly at the terrified Theo, who is thousands of times smaller than her. He is trembling and sweating with fear as he holds his hands in front of him and his tail between his feet and introduces himself to the mother bear. He says that he is a wandering merchant and even shows her his wandering merchant badge so that she will not harm him. Theo tries to tell her that he had a little misunderstanding with her baby, but before he can elaborate, the deafening roar of the mama bear stuns him and everyone else. The roar echoes throughout the 99th floor and continues for a few seconds, almost blowing Sejun and the rabbits away. When she stops roaring, the mother bear asks Theo something, and the scared cat merchant cries and apologizes, saying that they won't fight anymore. Sejun also enters the conversation to save the sales cat and says that it was just a little argument and nothing serious had happened. But he and everyone else are still terrified of the mother bear, who just stares at them. Then she huffs loudly and turns away, going back to the forest for her patrol. Sejun and Theo patiently watch her go, and then they breathe in relief, saying that they were almost in big trouble there. Theo is still crying and having hiccups, and Sejun goes to comfort him. He asks him if he is fine, and then asks him to calm down. Theo speaks in between his sobs and thanks Sejun for standing up for him. As Sejun holds him in his arms and consoles him, saying that he should have told him about the bear family earlier, the cat merchant does not stop crying. The rabbits are also worried about him, and they pity the cat as they surround him. Then the black rabbit takes initiative and starts licking Theo. He feels ticklish, but that invites even more of the rabbits to join in grooming the cat. Theo feels better and starts laughing and then the rabbits climb up on Sejun's shoulders and start licking him too, and he also laughs. But the bear cub is watching them from some distance, and he feels quite bad about what just happened. He approaches Sejun and Theo slowly with a sad expression on his face, and then starts licking the cat merchant while still being worried about him. That was his way of apologizing, and Theo understands that. He replies that he is also sorry for acting out so impulsively and tells Qing that they should be friends from now on. But while the bear cub still licks him, Theo requests that he not eat his treats from now on, wiping away his tears. The sudden relief gets to Sejun, and he yawns loudly, saying that they should all be good friends and live happily together. The yawn is contagious and first affects Theo, and then even Qin and the rabbits yawn simultaneously. The rabbit couple who were in the cave heard the commotion from earlier, and they came out to check what was happening quite late. As soon as they pop out of the cave, the husband rabbit spots Theo's bundle, with the straw hat he bought earlier sticking out of it. He takes it out, thinks that it was a nice hat, and even shows it to his wife, who has spotted Sejun, Theo, Qing, and the rabbits sleeping together. They are all cuddled up on top of each other, and the rabbit couple has an idea. They take the straw hat and place it gently on Sejun's face to protect him from sunlight, and he sleeps peacefully. But a slight smile spreads across his face as he realizes what his rabbit friends did. But in another place, that is, in a different dimension from the tower and from the real world, another series of events is unfolding. 
in a cosmic realm, a bunch of black dragons have gathered on a floating building surrounding a bright blue light. As they all stand patiently around the blue light, a dragon in human-like form is trying to use his magic on a big magic stone. He puts all his power into the stone, releasing blue lightning everywhere. But no matter how much power the man with dragon-like features uses, he does not get the desired result. He is shocked and frustrated at the result because he was trying to open a portal to the tower, but was failing each time. Another dragon in human form, named Anton Fratani, asks the elder dragon to calm down. But the older dragon, whose name is Kaiser Fratani, does not calm down and instead gets even more agitated upon hearing his words. He shouts, saying that how can he calm down in this situation when he can't see Aileen anymore? He is worried about Aileen, saying that it has been 10 years and several days since the last seizure she experienced. Kaiser finally managed to obtain the medicine for her condition, and now the portal to the tower was not opening for some reason. On top of that, the emergency system of the tower was not reacting either, so there is no way for them to cross over. Now, they are stuck in this dimension without knowing what was happening in the tower. Anton is more composed and optimistic compared to Kaiser, and he concludes that since the emergency system of the tower has not been activated, it is proof that Alien has not had a seizure yet, and they still have time to reach her. He tells Kaiser that he and the other black dragons understand his feelings because they are all Fratanis. Every one of them was gathered here because they were worried about Aileen, and they are anxious too. He says that the tower manager's cabin is at the center of all the mana that supports the tower, which is managed by the Fratani dragons. All the dragons take turns managing the tower and using the place and its mana flow to grow stronger. And every dragon had given up on using such a place for Aileen who was sick so that she could get better by being in the mana flow. Anton then adds that in order to look for the medicine for Aileen, the dragons risked a great loss, and they are still here to help her get healthy. Her body was unstable since it was broken by her dragon heart, and they wish for her to become healthy. Anton says that all the dragons here feel the same for Aileen, but Kaiser is still not satisfied. He says that they are still helpless, even if they have such strong feelings for the girl. But Anton replies that he understands what he means, calling him father, and says that this is why he is so calm. Aileen is his daughter, and though he is worried about her, Anton says that he believes in her more than anyone else. He is certain that his child is fighting the seizure well on her own. Kaiser is finally calmed down by his passionate words and decides not to be in a rush. He tells the other black dragons of the Fratani family that they have to stand by till the tower opens, and they nod and accept his command. They fly off to nearby places to rest and wait, leaving the father and son in the building. Anton says that it is already past the date of the seizure they were expecting, and he is as optimistic as he is worried. He asks his father if there was a chance that something good happened with Aileen's dragon heart in the tower, and Kaiser can only hope that it is the case. But as he turns back to the magic stone, he again starts worrying about his granddaughter and hopes that she is at least eating well, and she is indeed eating well. The black dragon, Aileen Fratani, is the gluttonous tower manager, and she is relishing the delicious taste of magical cherry tomatoes she received from Sejun. She is relaxing on a beanbag while reading a book and eating cherry tomatoes like popcorn. She thinks that because the rank of the cherry tomatoes rose from E to D, their taste has grown much stronger. Earlier, she could only manage to taste them when she filled her mouth with them. Now, only a few tomatoes at a time were enough to feel their taste. As she is enjoying the tomatoes, she suddenly feels something strange as her heart vigorously beats. Aileen is shocked because she can't believe what just happened, and checks her heart again. She looks at herself, recalling that her dragon heart has never beat once in the last 200 years. But right now, it moved on its own and even absorbed mana for a while. Aileen is still surprised by this turn of events, and then she remembers another detail about her medical conditions. She was prone to seizures, and it was almost time for her seizure to happen again. Aileen thinks for a while and arrives at the probable conclusion that it must be because of the magical cherry tomatoes. She picks one tomato and starts reading its information window again, saying that it was the crop grown by humans that could increase mana slightly. She had forgotten about that part of the crop's properties till now because she only thought about its taste. Aileen says that she thought it only tasted good, but it even has the ability to heal a dragon heart. She starts laughing and giggling to herself, and then loudly declares that the great black dragon Aileen Fratani, who is 200 years old, has finally found something she wants to protect. She thinks that since her dragon heart beat again, even if it was just for a moment, she is glad and thinks that the tower farmer Park Sejun has a role in it, and she is determined to protect him from now on. 
Aileen laughs to herself smugly, saying that Sejun should feel honored that someone like her was choosing to protect him. She uses her magic crystal to look at him, and she finds him sleeping. But as she sees him with another unrated item that he got while she was not looking at him, she smiles wide, saying that he is seriously unstoppable, and laughs to herself. But Sejun only gets a slight itch in his nose as a sign that the tower manager was thinking about him and had decided to protect him from now on. With this, the video ends, and it had the greatest reveal ever since the story started that completely dwarfed the first part of the chapter. No one could have thought that tower manager Aileen was actually here because she was unwell, and Sejun had such a big impact on her condition. Her family is worried for her, but little do they know that their girl is on the path to getting well soon. Let us call Aileen by her name instead of calling her the tower manager from the next chapter onward. And tell us in the comments what you think will happen next. Until then, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to our channel for more content like this.